our gap is now over 50 years old. Coaching What Works is all about closing that gap. Therefore, citing the complete research base behind Coaching What Works is an essential part of our work. But how to accomplish that feat had us worried. The evidence is scattered across time and continents. We certainly are not qualified to do such a huge undertaking. We are not researchers. But a miracle of perfect timing happened. On publication in 2009, John Hattie's Visible Learning, a synthesis of over 800 meta-analyses relating to achievement, presents the biggest ever collection of research into what actually works in schools to improve student learning. Not what is fashionable, not what various political and educational vested interests want to champion, but what actually produces the best results in terms of improving learning and educational outcomes. It became an instant bestseller and was described by the UK's prestigious Times Educational Supplement as revealing education's holy grail, an apt description and a huge promise. So what is it that has made Hattie, often referred to as the world's most important educational researcher, the focus of such global attention and controversy? In essence, the answer is his life's work. Over the past 25 years, he's compiled what is thought to be the largest educational research study ever of what works best in the classroom. To give you an idea of the breathtaking scope of visible learning, consider this. There are about 1,800 research citations in its 2009 bibliography. The U.S. professional development market is currently dominated by Robert Marzano. So how many visible learning bibliography citations are attributed to Marzano? Nine. Nine. Educators today are incredibly lucky to be the recipients of this groundbreaking work. Hattie has synthesized the research available in English and continues to do so. The data are in. But Hattie's gone even further. He has formatted the findings for the first time ever so that we all can understand education's significant body of research. Let's take a look. Influences or effects on student achievement are ranked on this easy-to-read barometer as negative or reverse effects, such as student retention or student mobility, seen here in red, low effects, seen here in yellow and orange, such as developmental effects, and do not miss this, low effects on student achievement also include teacher average effects. That is, what student growth teachers typically attain using, for example, summer school or whole language. This average point, point four, Hattie calls the hinge point, the point where we move from typical to great teaching. Lastly, are medium to high effects, or what Hattie calls the zone of desired effects, seen here in blue. You know, almost everything positively affects student achievement, like a breathing teacher in the classroom, for example. But Hattie says setting the bar at zero is absurd. If we set the bar at zero and then ask that teachers and schools improve achievement, we have set a very, very low bar indeed. Such annual gains we so eagerly claim are trivial at best. Hattie does not mince words, saying that if you aren't doing better than average, then you should pack it in because you're not making a real difference in your students' learning.